Module 6. Analyzing macros and identifying errors. So far we have been writing macros in their entirety and then seeing if they worked. This isn't a very efficient way of working because as macros become larger it becomes increasingly difficult to write the code correctly first time round. Therefore this module is concerned with helping you write longer macros by analysing them as you go along and, when errors do occur, being able to deal with the errors. So let's return to our loan repayment calculator that we created in Module 4. Essentially, the macro calculated the outstanding balance of a loan after 5 years in column D using the parameters in columns A to C. It would also calculate the total period of repayment in column E. Whenever you make a change to the spreadsheet, everything would occur instantaneously. Let's suppose you don't want it to occur instantaneously. In that case you can introduce what is known as a breakpoint within the code. If you put the mouse to the left hand side of the code window and click, it makes the line go red. That means the code will stop when it gets to that line. So let's change it back to 10% the interest rate for the $180,000 loan and see what happens. We now have a yellow bar across the red line. The yellow bar indicates which line of code will be processed next by Visual Basic. If we press play at this stage, the macro will run to completion. However, if we press F8 or on the debug menu, go to step into, then we will just process that one line of code. That line of code was designed to define row num as equal to two and it will increment up to 6 later. The really useful feature of Excel Visual Basic is that if you then put the cursor over row num, it will tell you what row num's present value is. So it says row num equals 2. Let's see what interest rate is equal to. At the moment it's empty. That's because it hasn't been assigned a value. If we press F8 again, interest rate becomes equal to 0 0.075, which is equivalent to 7.5%. So if no repayments are made on our $100,000 loan in row 2 at 7.5%, we would expect no repayments to be equal to $107,500, which it is. The outstanding amount for loan would then be that minus $12,000, 12 times 1,000, so we'd expect the outstanding equal to $95,500. Once again, it is. As well as seeing what values different variables have, it's also useful to be able to see which order the code is processed in. So from the second year onwards, we enter this little loop. If I keep pressing play, you can see that it keeps going around that loop until year num equals 5, at which point it will move on to the next line. You can even observe the outstanding balance being put into cell 2.4, so cell D2 will enter the outstanding balance, although it is unchanged in this case. We can check that by hovering over outstanding and seeing that it's equal to 73,862. You may also have seen this if statement, which looks for when the outstanding balance is less than zero, never came into effect because the outstanding balance was always positive. If you just want to see if that section of code is working, you can put a break mark within that code and press play. If you're unsure when that breakpoint has been reached, you can check row num. So we're now in row 6. You can check year num. So we're now in year 2. And you can check outstanding, which is equal to minus $34,000. So this line puts the 0 in cell D6. It then tells the code to go to skip section, which means the period of repayment is now only equal to 2. Then the code goes to next row num, but as row num was equal to 6 and would now take the value 7, it no longer gets sent around the loop because that only goes from row num equals 2 to 6. So then we get to the end of the macro. If we press F8 a couple more times, the macro is complete and the yellow line has gone. One more helpful hint is that if you want to remove breakpoints, you can either click on the breakpoints themselves, or if the code is actually on the line of the breakpoint, you can press F9 or you can go to debug toggle breakpoint to get rid of it. 
If you ever want to run the macro to completion, just press play as before. I've now created an exact copy of the sheet with the full intention of breaking it. I'm going to insert another row at the top of the page. I've changed the sheet, but our references to row num equals 2 to 6 are now causing confusion because in row 2 we have words and not numbers. When Excel finds an error, it will always give you this message. It'll give you the option of either ending the code or debugging the code. If it's happened to you so far, you may well have pressed end, but now we're going to look at the idea of debugging code. So I press debug and the problem has occurred in the yellow line. Let's see what the yellow line says. The yellow line says that cells row num, which is equal to 2, 1, so that's cell A2, which says loan, which we can also see by holding the cursor over it, has to get multiplied by 1 plus interest rate, which is equal to the words interest rate. That line's clearly now a nonsense. The code is broken because we started analysing the data a row too early. So one way of fixing the problem would be to change row num to rows 3 to 7 to reflect the row we've inserted. You can then drag the arrow for the current line of code back to the line for row num equals 3 to 7 and try and run the code from there. There will now be no problem as row 3 is numerical as row 2 used to be. If we then press play, the macro will run to completion. Just occasionally, Excel will have a habit of crashing completely. That can happen if you forget to put these command lines application.enableEvents equals false and application.enableEvents equals true. If we now make a change to the spreadsheet, I've tried to click on the spreadsheet and I can't. This means the macro is still running. To stop a macro in this position, you need to press escape on the keyboard. You then get an error message which says code execution has been interrupted. At that point, you can debug. So let's see what the problem is. At the moment, row num is equal to 5, so it seems the code is working fine. The problem we have is that when the macro changes the sheet, it sends the macro back into a loop again. So what I'm going to do is put a breakpoint right at the start of the macro and hit play. Row num is now empty again, and we're at the start of the macro. Row num becomes equal to 3. Let's press play again. Row num is empty again and we're at the start of the macro and this will go on forever. That's why we should disable events and if we put the line in to disable events now, now if we stop the macro and attempt to make changes in the sheet again, the macro works again and we can click around the sheet immediately after we've made changes. Error handling is a very complex topic within Excel and sometimes it's simply not possible to get rid of every error in a spreadsheet. Therefore what you can say to Excel is that when an error occurs, so you say on error, resume next. That means if you encounter an error, just go to the next line of code. The alternative is that you can say on error, go to another point within the code. This is often a point at the end of the code. In this case, we'll call it exit sub. When we send the code to exit sub, we want to be assured that no further errors will occur. Therefore, you can either put it as the very last line, or in this case, we'll put it above the line which enables events again, because otherwise events would stay disabled. So now if we deliberately introduce an error by changing row num from rows 3 to 7 to rows 2 to 7, we can see what happens by introducing a breakpoint and making a change to the spreadsheet. Now if we carry on, we had an error before on the no repayments line, so when we get there and we try and multiply the word loan by the word interest rate, we skip straight to exit sub and it's as though there wasn't an error at all. When you're developing code, this isn't a very useful technique because you want to work out what was causing an error. However, if you're the end user of some code, then it can be useful to have the error handling in there so you don't get held up by every little error and you don't have to debug the code yourself. Do be warned though that by glossing over errors, you may be incurring errors in the way that you're manipulating and processing the data.